Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, our beloved. So, um, yesterday a word came to me, and that word was, don't be zealous for more than the manna and the water. And I'm going to do that one first, and the other one is um, lifting up the name of Jesus, all right? So, we're going to do both. That one first, and we're going to do the other one first. No, the other one second, the other one first, the other one second. So... And it's also rainy here, so uh, hence all of that. But um, the you know it's dark, kind of whatever. So the word of Lord came to me saying yesterday, um, do not be zealous for more than the manna and more than the water. And I said, Father, what do you want to say? And He said to me, He said, go and tell the people, do not be zealous for more than the water, more than the manna. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, go to the children of Israel and see how they murmured against me. See how they complained against me. I heard him say, go to the children of Israel and see how they murmured against me. And see how they complained against me. So the word of the Lord came to me saying, tell them not to murmur for more. Hi, Brother John for more than the manna and the water. I heard Lord saying to be content, to have godly contentment. He said in a time and a place like now, it's two people rising up in the earth. One that are one side, they're, God, they're contented. And the other one, they are seeking after the world. I heard him say, do not go after more than the manna and the water. He is giving what needs to be given. He is sustaining. He is and he was and he'll forever be God who knows what we have need of. He is the one who is providing. He sustains what he makes. He, all things hold together in him. All things, all things, and that includes us. Though mankind would love to go about and say that they, uh, they supply what they want. God supplies what we need. Alright, and I heard him saying, even now, do not go after more than the bread and the manna. And I asked him, I said, Father, why not? And he said, because just like the children of Israel was made to walk through the wilderness... Just like they were, you know, wandering the wilderness and God was doing a work in them. He said, even now, at the beginning of sorrows or tribulation hitting the world, he said, just like that, I'm doing a work in the people. I am causing people to develop character. I'm causing people to develop patience. And I heard him say, suffering produces patience. Patience produces character of God. And the character of God produces hope. So he said, even as the children of Israel were made to wander the wilderness, even as they were made to um, to go through the desert and God was feeding them, but he wasn't giving them what they were accustomed to. He wasn't filling up their plates with meat. He wasn't filling up their plates with the cucumbers and the garlics and the leeks and the fish. And you, He wasn't giving them what they were accustomed to. He was taking them to a higher place and he needed them to come out of self in the way that they had grown accustomed to in bondage. Because I heard him saying that when suffering comes, people don't like to go through it. Sometimes they don't like to endure it. So they bend to every side. And they begin to walk crooked, if you will. They begin to walk in a bent pattern and form. They begin to seek all sorts 
to get out of that suffering. Some people are patient with God and others are not. And he said, even as I brought the children of Israel in the wilderness and through the wilderness, and yeah, they lacked the meats and the cucumbers and the garlics and the fish and, you know, the, 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 the choicest food that they had in Egypt, but they were in bondage. He said, even like that, I'm bringing people to a point of showing them that it's not about what you put in to you that matters it's about what comes out and he said tell the people that it's about what comes out what comes out where what comes out how well I heard Abba Jesus say that what comes out of a man's heart because out of the treasure of a man's heart flows good flows good and evil a good man brings out of the treasure of his heart goodness, and an evil man brings forth evil. So out of the treasure of a man's heart, treasure. Treasure is something that you keep, you store, you 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 pile up, you you gather in treasure. Something that's precious. And Obba says uh, he wants us to examine what is most precious to us what is most precious to us because whatever I hear you father whatever we're piling up eventually it overflows and when something overflows it comes out when something overflows it's uh, it's going to be apparent Sometimes you can't tell what's in a cup until it overflows. You know, it's like, uh, I'm going to do an example. Oh, I'm going to do a demonstration. It's like this cup here, right? It's like this cup. You can't tell what I have in this cup until it flows out or until it spills over. If the cup, if the cup is like this, you can't tell what's in there but if the cup is tilted over you're gonna know what's in there or, or if I come and I pour something in there that was in there or oh, not in there and you see it overflowing you can tell by the color you can tell by the consistency you can you you'll be able to tell what's in the cup that's what I was doing even now. I would do it, but I'd soak up myself and I don't want to. So we're just going to leave it like that for now, right? So that's what he's doing. He said, out of the treasure of a man's heart flows good and evil. He's allowing to be seen what's inside of the heart. What it is that's really stored up. I heard the Lord saying, go and tell the people that they'll no longer be whitewashed sepulchers and they'll no longer be cleaning the outside of the cup and leaving the inside dirty. They're both inside and outside has to be clean. So whatever is on the inside is going to come out. I am drawing it out even as I am tipping I am tipping over the cup. Whatever is on the inside is going to show. I heard him saying, whatever is on the inside is about to be poured out. You're about to see the nature of people. You're about to see the soul condition of people. You're about, in suffering, many things come out. Many things are revealed in suffering. And uh, some people become... Why do I hear the word elusive? Some people become... Um, I hear the word elusive. I don't know why. Okay, so some people 
they they avoid the presence of God and they become drawn back to self and they become self-seeking they become what's that word I'm looking for King I don't have a word they be become far away from the presence of God eluding moving away from the presence of God some when they're in suffering that's when they go through the fasting that's when they go through the prayer that's when they begin to seek God's face there's a difference there's a one kind and there's an another kind Abba is revealing what's inside of the cup because I heard him say and I can't stress on this enough suffering produces patience you got to be patient right you know when they say you got to ride out a storm does that sound familiar you got to ride out a storm you got to let it take its uh take it how do you say take it take its path you got to ride out a storm because only time can bring it to a stop it's like that it's like allowing the the process allowing the the time frame of this particular thing to ride out its course or to move in its course i heard alert saying that suffering produces patience so be patient with it and you'll see what god is doing be patient with it and you're gonna see what he's about to reveal so i heard him saying even in a time where the earth is in a chaotic state the earth you, you, there's so many things happening there's there's not there in some places it hasn't hit as bad but in some places it's really disastrous it's destructive destruction has come to that place and people are suffering for all sorts be it from water to food everything there's no normalcy there there's the expectation of death and destruction wars are happening everything that you could think of that a human does not want to face people are facing and I heard him say that some people are turning away from God they're turning look what he's doing yeah, he's electrocuting me. Some people are turning away from him instead of turning towards him. And we know that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he who dwells in the secret place, he who is seeking God's face to be in the secret place where he's hidden himself, shall abide under his shadow. So those who are seeking his face, they are in the secret place. Just like the children of Israel in the wilderness. Just like those who trusted God to lead them to the land flowing with milk and honey because they knew that Egypt had bondage. And they knew that even if they had their tables fat, that fat was made for the taskmaster's whip. And to be pushed around in a land where they had no freedom, but they were told what to do and to worship foreign gods and not the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So the children of Israel, though they, they had their tables fat and laid out, they had the fattened calf and they had the, well, they had a piece of beef, a piece of lamb, a piece of fish, some garlic, 
whatever the Egyptians would sell them or give them and then they get a slap with that and a whip with that and their women were raped and whoever they wanted to plunder they plundered it was not a life but now they know that whom the spirit of the living God I hear you the spirit of the living God breaks the yoke so that yoke that was on their shoulders that yoke was broken by the presence of Yah and now they wanted they wanted him in full they wanted to worship him they wanted to praise him they wanted what he gave and they knew that this life that they were living it was like scraps and dogs eat scraps but the children of Yahweh they have a full table and nobody slaps them and say go to this slave and go to that slave for whom the sun sets free is free indeed they're not slaves so just like the children of Israel they were ooh, king. just like the children of Israel were I see you I see you I see what's going on there yes Lord just like the children of Israel were they were suffering imagine they, they went to buy something in the market when they finished buying it they slapped them over the head or clout them or kick them down with their their bags and their slaves so whatever's on the ground they dust it and they put it back in the bag and they say thank you so much and they pay for it It was a life like that that they were living they were not free they were in the land that was bondage so those who were in the wilderness were were ve though some of them not the older heads the older heads didn't want a savior and they crucified Jesus when he came the, that generation of vipers um, the spirit of those people that were passed on but the older heads in the wilderness didn't want a savior. They didn't want the, the deliverance that God was giving. They wanted, you know what they wanted? They wanted the fish and the cucumbers and the leeks and the onions and whatever else was in Egypt. They didn't want this thing that God was raining down to feed them, which was like a wafer, like a sweet bread. And they didn't want the water fresh from a rock. That was not enough for them. And to push it further, they didn't even want the quail that he was giving to them. So much that it came up to the camp and it stunk because they couldn't eat all of it. You want chicken? Take chicken. You want meat? Is it meat that you're thirsty for? Take meat. You want meat? Go ahead and eat till it rots out of your teeth. They didn't want even that. What did they want? They wanted a taskmaster's whip because some people love bondage. They might have gotten accustomed to the taskmaster's whip and the surroundings that they were in they were seeing desert tumbleweed desert tumbleweed tree desert tumbleweed they weren't seeing the Egyptians market they weren't seeing the abundance of food that they were accustomed to and God was taking their eyesight out of the natural and trying to put it in the spiritual to show them that he was the one who could bring them to a land where nobody kicks them over when they buy something nobody mocks them and nobody will Ill treat them and rape their women and kill their children and just kill their men the, he was showing them that he was removing that yoke that they had grown so accustomed to you know oh father you want me to say this some people have grown accustomed to slaving 
after the system of the world. And I hear Abba saying, even when this thing came out, staying in the routine, they ran for it because to bow down to its system because all they could All they, all, they, all they wanted to understand was having a routine, even if it meant denying God. Even if it meant bowing down to the devil. Even if it meant denying that Jesus Christ could save and could keep. So they ran. For the, they ran as fast as they could as soon as it came out. And it's like that. He's showing me, even as a slave, he's showing me in the spirit. He's showing me as a slave, a man who is a slave. And I see him all bony and scrawny. And I see him, he's carrying this huge. Um, thing on his shoulders it looks to me like he's pushing the mill that grinds the corn and he's showing me this and it's as if he loved getting up in the morning and feeling that thing on his back knowing that at the end of it he would get fed He had become accustomed to that weight of the mill on his shoulders that was grinding the corn that he kind of liked it in that after it he had um, he had likened that experience to getting paid or getting a morsel of food after it. So the children of Israel could not, they, they did not, they were not in pattern of yet. They were not in a uh, trusting mode yet. And God was trying to birth that out. So he gave them enough to sustain them, but not to spoil them. He gave them enough to keep them. But not to make them fat bellied and sitting down, rubbing, saying, Ah, oh, I got it. Oh, yeah, that was so good. You know, when you eat till your guts, just so to speak, your stomach is bursting and you can't move, and you're like a python sitting down there, and you're like, Ugh. Yeah, because when a snake eats, it doesn't move. In Trini, we say, Um, I forget what we call it. Well, actually, I remember. I just don't want to say it because it sounds kind of racist. But anyway. So, in, it, you know, here's we have a word for that. When you, you stuff your gut and you can't move. And you're just like a fat snake that just ate. There's no other whatever animal that just ate. Um, he didn't do that of Israel. He wanted them to trust him. So he told them, he said, you know, you're going to find this thing on the ground. Every single day, you're going to find this thing on the ground. And it's going to be just enough for your family and the portions are going to be enough for your family. And he said, on the the day preceding, well, the day before the Sabbath, he says, you're going to find twice as much. So you're going to find for that day, and you're going to find for the Sabbath. You're going to gather that as well. He said, but when you over gather, you're not, it's going to turn to worms. If you over gather, if you heap up more, in other words, if you go, into the mindset of greed it's going to turn to worms 
So it's not like you can heap it up and be lazy for the next day and say, well, I already gathered for Monday and Tuesday, so I don't really have to go out Tuesday and get it. He was teaching them to trust him. He was teaching them that beautiful line that we know so well. Do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough worry of its own. He was teaching them to trust him that there would be enough, that he would satisfy them and give them what they needed. Not just what they needed, but what they even wanted. When they murmured against him, he gave them the water. When he murmured against him, he gave them the chickens on the quail. When they, they, they continued to imagine God, Sovereign Father, Yahweh, is there and he's looking down and he's feeding the people and they're murmuring. I've been eating this manna for like so long. I, I don't even get any butter with that. I'm not even getting a piece of cheese. Nobody will put a piece of lamb on that for me. And imagine he's looking at them. Do you think not that the do you do you not think that he could not have laid out a lush table before them and provided every single thing that they wanted? He could have put the cucumbers, the leeks, the corn. He could have put a fat piece of cow there. He could have put this. He could have made it like the Feast of Tabernacles every single day if he wanted. But, beloved, there was a lesson to be learned. And he wanted them to learn, to learn it because they didn't trust him. Does God know our hearts? Does he know the state of our hearts? Do you think he who made our hearts and our minds know the state of it? The answer is yes. The Bible says that God weighs the heart of a man. He looks to it to see what is really in his heart, what he is really wanting to do then he's really he's always trying it he's always um searching it that's why david said search my heart and know me search my heart try me search me he wanted the children of israel to trust him he wants us to trust him just in the exact same way. It's a time and a season where some have plenty and some don't have any. It's a time and a season where some have overflowing and some just have just enough. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to know that he is more than able to overflow us. He came to give us abundance. But not if it facilitates greed. Not if it facilitates uh, the, the character that's not of him, but the character of the world. He came to give us every good thing. But not when it nurtures the spirit of the world in us. He wants to teach us to trust him just like he taught Israel. He wants to teach us how to walk after him. How to, to understand that he is mindful. That he knows before we even know. He wants us to understand that he knows. And in it's that understanding, because knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. In that understanding, we'll see His amazing love. 
will see his gentleness, will see his mercy, will see that he is mindful of every Yes, Lord, he's mindful of every detail. And in his time, in his time when he is perfecting the character of himself in us, is when he will birth it. But in the meantime, he wants us to trust his hand. He wants us to trust him even if we don't see it right away. And to be satisfied with the manna and the water that's on a table. He wants us to know that if he wanted to, at any time, at any day, he could just spread the king's table out for us and bring us in to eat. And when I say the king's table, I want you to think deeper than food, okay? I'm talking about buildings. I'm talking about vehicles. I'm talking about business ventures. I'm talking about all the lush and the plush things that he can give. But he will not do it until a certain seed of his character has germinated inside of us. He will not do it because it's not the most important thing that he wants from us. He can do it at any time. But this birthing of his character, this birthing or the trusting of us to him by spirit must come forth. The trusting of him is what he wants from us. There are certain things in his spirit that he wants in our spirit. That comes forth by the withholding of. And it keeps us in a place of saturation in his spirit. It soaks us. You know when you put a piece of meat to marinate? And you soak it? And you leave it to soak in? Yeah. You know, here we have a thing we call chow. We call it chow. You take a fruit. And you add some pepper and some salt and some seasonings and some nice stuff to it. And it becomes this delightful, delightful, yummy thing that when it's soaked in. Like all those good stuff goes into the fruit. That's what he wants. He wants us marinated. You know like when you're marinating meat, you soak in all the good stuff. He wants us marinated in his presence. And even as the world is going through the beginning of sorrows, he's teaching us that his, he, he's teaching us even as it goes that where we have to wait and where we have to be patient with him, he's teaching us something about himself to trust him as this, to trust him as that. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the elaborate and the outstanding and the shiny and the table wait out before you. But I can give you that. Forget that. There's something deeper I want you to know. That I'm able to do it. But do you trust me? That in my time, I will bring it forth. In my time, I will do it for you. He's asking, do you trust him? That's the word of the Lord, and that's what he laid on my heart. He likened manna and water unto what we have to, be, to have godly contentment. It's great gain. He's likening that to the manna and the water. I'll leave you with these things in Jesus' name. If you don't know him as your Savior, as the one who understands and knows what you have need of before you know. He heard your cry before you even echoed it as a baby and even as a grown man and a grown woman. He knows what you have need of before you even do. Do you trust that? He's waiting to see it. Jesus' name. 
All right. So if you don't know him as your your savior and your provider, and the one who knows your thoughts before you even know them, the one who knows your needs before you even know them, now is your time to receive him. Believe in your heart, confess in your mouth that he is Lord, and you shall be saved. So Father God, I come to you as sinner. I'm sorry that I didn't come sooner, but I'm here now. Thank you for coming as Jesus Christ and living a perfect life for me, giving me the perfect report of righteousness and becoming my sin and unrighteousness. Say so thank you for dying for me, taking my punishment upon you, for raising from the dead on the third day, giving me life and victory over this life, death, hell, tribulation and trials. Say, Jesus, I forsake now every religion and tradition of men, and I run to you, God. Say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior, meaning you walk through every single day of your personal life with you. You know when you say you don't, you, you know nobody understands? He understands. He lived it out for you. Say, I confess you, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior. On my Lord God. Yes. So lead me and I'll follow you. All the days of my life. Yes. Go ahead. In Jesus name. Keep your eyes closed. Father God you said if those who said that prayer. You see they're, they're here. So Father God. You said if those who said that prayer. Would. I believe in Eric and confess your mouth. That you are Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be saved. And mighty God, even now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak that the peace of spouse all understanding be with them. Angels of the Lord encamped around them. I speak, Lord God, that your grace that is enough be with them. Help them to know that if they were the only one in this world, you would have come and died that same horrific death for them. Because you love them so much. Father, lead them to a Bible-believing person. That they might be well nurtured in the word. And Go to the waters of baptism, where they may be baptized and receive the baptism of your Holy Spirit, Father. And even now, fill them with your amazing love in your name, Jesus Christ. Angels are rejoicing in heaven, beloved. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, welcome. Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.